Hi, I'm Walter Gordon, a retired Moog engineer and past president of the Niagara Aerospace Museum. And as NASA prepares to return to the moon with the Artemis program for the first time since Apollo 17 in December 1972, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Apollo program itself and how we got to the moon and how Moog and Bell Aerospace contributed to that effort. First, I'd like to talk about the Moog actuators on all three stages of the Saturn V booster. Three. Two, one, the zero. rocket engines on the Saturn V were actually controlled hundreds of times per second by Moog hydraulic actuators. And the one on the third stage, those were absolutely critical. They had to work. The third stage only had one rocket engine and one set of actuators. And when it came time to leave Earth orbit and head towards the moon, if those actuators didn't work, it, Apollo would have failed. There was no backup. The next thing I'd like to discuss is the Bell Lunar Landing Training Vehicle made by Bell Aerospace in Niagara Falls, which is now part of the Moog Space and Defense Group. The LLTV solved what at the time seemed to be an insoluble problem. How do you simulate landing on one-sixth of Earth's gravity on the moon here on Earth? So what they did is they made a special vehicle, the Lunar Landing Training Vehicle, that had a jet engine that was gimbaled to vertical down the center of the axis of the vehicle. So no matter what the LLTV was doing, this jet engine was automatically canceling out five-sixths of the Earth gravity. In that way, you had a flying simulator that the Apollo astronauts could fly on Earth that had the momentum and the inertia of a full lunar module, however, it only weighed one-sixth, as it would do when flying on the moon. And in fact, Neil Armstrong has gone on the record saying that he could not have safely landed the lunar module on the moon on Apollo 11 without the training that he had here on Earth on the Bell Lunar Landing Training Vehicle. Altitude 4200, go for landing, over. I'd like to finish by talking about the Lunar Module Ascent Engine, built by Bell Aerospace Engineers here in Niagara Falls, and arguably the most critical item on the entire Saturn V stack. Once they landed on the moon, got outside, collected their rocks, got back inside, locked the door, and said 54321, and pressed the button for this engine to fire, if it didn't work, Armstrong and Aldrin would be stranded on the moon. There was no backup. That's one small step for man. So now that we've discussed Neil Armstrong's one small step, the next giant leap is NASA's return to the moon on the Artemis program. So stay tuned for the next installment of our video series, The Return to the Moon and Moog's role in it on Artemis.